Hello YouTubers and uh, welcome to uh, my review of uh, the Panasonic G7. <coughs> I have been wanting to do this um, second review for some time uh, as a lot of you had demanded and uh, what I am going to do is uh, perhaps take you through my camera setup uh, and tell you what are the things that is needed for this particular set of camera. So this is my cleaning kit here as you can see and uh, I am going to use this to clean my camera sensor so this is my cleaning kit it comes up with a uh, <coughs> and what do you call this and um, then i also have a couple of lenses we're not going to talk about these lenses but primarily it is the 145 to 150 mm lens uh, it's, a, it, it's kind of a standard lens which came about so this is this is the body i'm talking about uh, it's, it's a very decent lens, uh, but I'm not going to talk about lens in this particular review. This is more about the camera. I also have um, Olympus uh, digital 50mm lens, uh, which is which is actually 25mm, but it is 50mm equivalent, and it's a very good lens. Uh, again, I'm not going to talk about the lenses, so I'm going to keep this aside. So coming on to my and, and this is my remote shutter release button which I think uh, was a welcome addition to this particular kit. So coming on to my camera, uh, this is the Panasonic G7, uh, it's, it's a very good body as you can know, see and I will jump right into the features of this camera. Uh, so first thing first, uh, if you flip open the screen it's a revolving screen so you 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 can easily revolve it 360 degrees so it, it goes all the way here uh, which is very useful for all your uh, selfie modes and stuff like that and you can turn this back as well so this is a good mode to see yourself when you're taking pictures and you know um, we'll talk more about the the camera's um, lcd mode Okay, and uh, let's look at the the camera's lens itself. So, uh, the camera sensor. I'm sorry. So, this is the camera sensor. Uh, this is a micro four thirds sensor. And in my previous series, I'd shown you how to clean the sensor. So, I'm not going to clean it again because it's already absolutely spec and clean. So, I, I would like you to have a good look at the sensor so this, this is how the sensor looks like okay so and this is my olympus 25mm lens i really love this lens it's one of the best lenses i've ever bought and it, it's really good um, so you snap it open you match the red dots and you snap it close like this you can hear the click and it's done and this is the range finder so whenever you switch on the camera you see the range finder will try to you know assess the range and you know decide your autofocus and this is the click button to open the camera's lens the external features also include this is the horseshoe mount basically and this is this this is what goes onto your tripod okay and this is your camera battery housing so you pop up the camera's battery i bought two camera batteries because the battery life is not very good they typically use me about 300 to 400 shots uh, so i bought two batteries and if you open the, so you also have the memory card sliding right next to it um, so this is my memory card as you notice i'd i'd recommend you buy something of this uh, speed this is an extreme pro 95 mb uh, mbs per, you know, mm, megabytes per second uh, and it's a 32 G gb card and uh, it's the u3 series so this is one of the high-end series and, and it's a very good um, uh, memory card but this is really useful especially if you're taking a 4k video so we'll pop this back close the housing and um, this is if you look at the external features 
you also have an HDMI input and you've got a remote shutter option so if I'm going to use my remote shutter it gets popped in here and once it's popped in I can use this to operate my camera and even lock my shutter it's a pretty useful feature and nifty feature especially to avoid any camera shake that you might have and um, I really love it and there's an audio video digital output as well um, it's the proprietary um, system of Panasonic so with that over we will move on to the mic so this is the mic it doesn't have an audio out but yeah, sorry this is a um, it doesn't have an audio in it, it has an audio out so whenever you're recording you can use this to sorry it doesn't have an audio out it has an audio in so you cannot listen to your audio but you can record your audio into it which is a pretty nifty feature uh, but you need to have something of uh, a two pin converter like this so this this thing is a is a two pin converter uh, typically in cameras you would have something like this so this is a three pin converter so this typically you know I've got a uh, I have a converter which takes in the three, three, three pin input and then converts that into you know a two pin output anyway so moving on uh, let's look at the feature set from a camera a camera's uh, <coughs> menu system so this is the horseshoe mount you know the horseshoe mount is pretty nifty you can pop it out and pop it in I have not used the horseshoe ever so I don't know I would use it uh, and this is the camera's flash so if I press this the camera flash pops out uh, and here are the various modes in the camera so the, the the movie mode is this is a movie mode and this is a custom setting mode so if you want to there are three custom settings and we'll talk about that this is the Panasonic mode this is the scene mode uh, this is the creative mode this is the auto intelligence mode this is typically the mode that you would use when you don't know anything about photography uh, this is of course the P mode the program mode which is like you know you can control a few features and the camera will take care of the rest this is the aperture priority shutter priority and finally the manual mode which is of course what the professionals use you've got an F1 button this is a function one button here this button is uh, pretty nifty because you can customize it for any of the features that you, you might have uh, here and you so let's say you want to keep your aperture setting from use from here so you can put it here you can also see that there is a mode dial which rotates here this can also be used to control your settings there's another uh, rotary dial here which is this one which can also be used to control setting all of these are customizable so I'm not going to go into it and it's got a dual feature so if I press this and then I do this then the ISO moves if I relieve this and then move it then probably something else will do and uh, this is the the recording button so I, I kind of feel that it's a redundant feature and of course this is the on and off button so you can switch it on and off um, on the far side on, you see the um, the manual focus button and you have the autofocus continues and the autofocus shutter priority mode so that's about it there are there are five function buttons so this is a f2 here and this is the playback mode you also have a quick menu button here which can be used this can be toggled as a quick menu this is the display mode so you, you want to see your pictures displayed in various uh, your menu displayed in various forms you can see and then you have the ISO the white balance function 3 um, I don't know what is this we'll check it out and the menu of course in the middle and finally you've got the delete button which is also function 4 button so you can change everything which is function can be changed into something else 
and on the left side you have uh, another function which is right now assigned to a live view so this is a live view finder and this thing this particular thing here uh, is the sensor for the live view and this is of course the live view so that's here on the left side uh, you have the regular camera sh camera shutter mode and uh, you have the continuous burst mode and you have the 4k mode which is really the hallmark of this camera and this is this is exposure mode it takes three pictures this is kind of used for bracketing because it uses three pictures at three different exposures uh, you also have I hope you are able to see this you also have a delayed timer here and you have a time lapse mode uh, pretty nifty features so most of the customized buttons are here so I will put it back into the regular shutter mode ok so that was about the camera buttons and uh, this is uh, of course to you know have your cameras uh, these things attached here ok so this is the screen and uh, this is how the camera looks like it talks about Wi-Fi, 4k and it's a micro 4 third series now uh, this is the button used to switch on the camera and when it switches on you can see a green light and you also if you turn this around you also see the mode dials coming on live and uh, what you see here below this one oops it's gone so I'm sorry so what you see in the first one that's that's the aperture so I can change the aperture if I want to using the toggle button here ok I am changing it now so this camera comes up with a 1.8 aperture and the next one is the ISO so I can change the ISO increase it or decrease it and if I want I can also change the white balance I am sorry this is not the ISO this is the shutter speed so I can reduce the shutter and increase the shutter, shutter speed so that's about this particular feature um, let's just try operating this camera um, this comes with touch sensitivity so you can use this to take a snap and once you take a snap it yeah, oops, I'm so sorry ok so once you take a snap you can preview the picture and uh, you can go and zoom the picture you can see if you like one portion of the picture and as you can see that the picture quality is pretty good you can zoom out so that was a previous picture taken you can take a particular space and then play around with that um, so that's about the picture uh, so this is the battery display here and this tells you that this is a raw image that has been taken this tells you the aspect ratio and uh, I am going to use something which you can see with so probably so this tells you the the number of pictures available this is the battery this is the aspect ratio this is uh, the image type raw um, this is the the delete button I can use it and this tells me if I want to take all the shots or just go into one particular shot and so on and so forth so we can play around with it ok so going down um, the ISO button this is the ISO button 200 exposure so you can reduce or increase the exposure this also happens to have a shutter speed right now of 1 200th of a second it's at f1.8 and uh, this is manual so 
manual focus it shows it's manual and the flash is not operating and you can also upload the photos so let's get into the menu set and see what you can do with it so i can go into menu set i can format i can do sensor cleaning i can do pixel refresh so format will format the entire disk sensor cleaning is a nifty feature and um, you know if you don't want to touch the sensor physically you can use this and uh, pixel refresh i guess similar thing kind of refreshes a pixel like that okay so uh, this is the wi-fi setting you can connect it to your mobile phone and use it to operate through the mobile phone it's a very neat feature and you can reset all the features okay there is a exposure compensation reset off it tells you the version so this is a firmware firmware uh, version you can set the language the menu information blah 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 i'm not going to go into all of these because it then is going to turn it to really just a menu walkthrough so let's get into so you can use a touch screen toggle so i want to go here i will touch this and go into camera and in camera what i can do first thing i'll do is go and uh, change the picture quality so i can we keep going down i think this is it i think uh, i'm sorry i think it just kind of toggled back so what i do is i go back into camera i go into photo style filter aspect ratio picture size so here i can change the picture size i can make it large medium or small and quality i can change it from raw to jpeg to high high quality jpeg and this is raw plus jpeg and this is only raw so if you just want to shoot raw this is it but you need some special software to process it i'll i'll keep it for the timing i'll just keep it at jpeg and uh, metering mode allows you to get into spot metering or broad metering so these are things that you would use if you really know about the camera settings uh, about photography so i generally use uh, a whole area instead of spot so assuming so i'll just tell you what is spot metering so if let's say this is spot metering which is switched on now and i want to use my exposure compensation for this particular shot now i can choose it with a darker scene let's say this is the darker scene and my metering will be focused on this darker area or the brighter area so it, it it's not a general metering it's a, a, actually a spot metering so i don't want to use spot metering typically one is okay with this particular meeting this is the burst burst rate i can increase the burst rate to high medium and low 4k is a very nifty feature you can record while the shutter is processed um, it 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 records in 4k so it also uses that feature to give you some pre burst mode and stuff like that it does auto bracketing as well uh, there is a self timer this is pretty nifty feature if you want to just take a snap and uh, you know hold it up for 10 seconds and quickly go yourself and take it uh, and this is good time lapse is i think it's one of the best features in this camera it has automatic time lapse uh, highlights and shadows it it pretty much has all the features that a professional camera has so you can increase your highlights you can decrease your highlights you can play around with that it's got an hdr i'm not going through each of the menu set because then going to be very complicated for you 
so you also have shutter delay you have flash you have several features here so feature wise very rich uh, this is the video mode so here i can uh, play different things like wind wind noise cancelling snap movie recording format so right now its recording format is mp4 i can change that so that is that recording quality this these are recording qualities available it's it's got 4k which only high end cameras have even right now 5d mark 3 has 4k but this camera is under $1000 in fact this is under $700 so that's a $4000 camera okay so here you go and it's got custom buttons so you have a silent mode shutter af lots of modes here lots of mode peaking it's got a histogram you can play around with that zebra gives you this is a good one because it tells you what what's the kind of exposure you've got so if your picture is too exposed the zebra kicks in so right now it was switched off that's why i'm going to put it on on so these are the overexposed areas because the zebra is on and you can decide if you want to play around with that so that's that and then um, you can connect it to your tv this is the playback mode so you can decide how you want to play around with that you can take a time lapse video and then we watch it here you can do stop motion videos you can take pictures and then turn it into shop um stop motion so all in all a uh, very good camera i think uh, one of the one of the good offerings for somebody who wants to get into photography the format is pretty nifty uh, it handles well <coughs> and uh, it's got all the professional features that that are available in any other $4000 camera and i think it's it's a very decent camera so if you want any specific things to be known about this let me know i'm happy to do another review uh thanks for um, having a look at this camera i would recommend that anybody who starts photography should have a look at this camera it's quite a, quite affordable at the price range and it's got all the features that's necessary so thanks for that and uh, goodbye have a great day bye